My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, love, attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. And in this video, we're going to talk about the things that you need to know when you're navigating a spiritual awakening. And I went through my awakening back in 2018, 2019, right in the middle of that winter of that year, and everything just blasted open. I was seeing all colors and trees were more vibrant and my heart chakra was so open. I wanted to love everyone and everything. I wanted to stop in the middle of the street and say, everyone stop driving so fast. Why are you rushing through life? Appreciate the moment. And I was very much so an appreciative person when that was happening, like before my awakening, after my daughter passed away in 2012 from a muscle disorder at six weeks old. So that that event really kind of shifted me and awakened me a little bit. I would say it peeled back a little bit of a layer and it made me appreciate life. And I started to tell everybody how I felt when I felt it. And a little bit of that was fear, like, oh no, what if they die tomorrow and I can't say it? And then a little piece of it was just me savoring every moment of this life, knowing how special it is. So from 2012 to 2018, I was pretty grateful. I was teaching gratitude in my classroom. I was a high school teacher for 17 years. In my community, I was the girl that lost her baby. And then I was teaching high school kids how to be grateful, how to move your body, how to navigate depression, anxiety. And then I went through this spiritual awakening and I was like, whoa, what is this? What is happening to me? Now I'm seeing signs everywhere. Um, and I was seeing signs before that, like my daughter sends me hearts wherever I go. I have tattoos of hearts on my body and the angel numbers and all of those kinds of signs really started to happen when my third eye opened, when my heart chakra opened, when I got my Reiki certification and I went through my attunement, which is basically opening up your vessel. So if you are listening to this right now and you're going through changes in your body and you're seeing colors differently, or you're just seeing life differently, and you're like, what is going on? You're just awakening more to your truth. We are meant to be here, to be so, so present in our lives, to be doing what we came here to do, whether that's parenting, whether that's writing a book, whether that's starting a YouTube channel, everybody is so different, and we all have multiple missions. You know, it's not just my mission to do YouTube, I'm an aunt as well. I'm an aunt to 11 nieces and nephews, and I know a big part of my purpose was being there for them as they were growing up and they were there for me through my loss. So they helped me um, navigate my grief. But when we're on a spiritual awakening journey, there's so many things that my clients and myself back then experienced, and I couldn't understand what was going on and I couldn't trust myself. And I went from not believing in anything to all of a sudden now seeing signs and thinking, is this really guidance? Like, am I supposed to take action on this? Or I'm seeing like 10 different things in one week. What is the universe trying to tell me? And I had to make sense of all of it. And now that's why I started my channel because I wanted to be a home base for all of you guys to go to when you have questions about what you're experiencing in your body, in your reality, because most likely you're at home watching this and there might not be anybody in your community that is spiritually awakened and you might feel alone, and you might feel crazy. And the things I wanna share in this video are just that, is you're not crazy. <laughs> you can trust the signs that you're seeing. There is something we can't see, feel, or touch that's guiding us, a loving presence, and it, and it wants to kind of lay out the red carpet for us to follow, and then it's kind of like a little breadcrumb trail. And our job is to be in our bodies as much as we can to feel which direction to go. So your soul lives in your body. And when you're spiritually awakening, you're starting to remove all the trauma and all the pain. So you might be watching one of my videos in your car or at home. And all of a sudden you just start crying out of nowhere. And you're like, I don't know what's going on with me. Why am I crying right now? Maybe it's something I talk about. Maybe it has nothing to do with me. Maybe it's all about you. And maybe I say a word that resonates and it just hits your bones and you get chills all over your body. This is soul alignment. You are in the flow. And when we're in the flow, it's like truth. We experience truth up and down our body and tears start to come out of us. 
and we feel so good. And that's my favorite part of the spiritual awakening journey is that we can feel this bliss and this joy without food, without gambling, without sex, without shopping. It's just this soul alignment and you can't describe it. And you guys know if you've experienced it because you're just alone and you're feeling so connected to something and you're connected to you and you're connected to that source energy. And then you look at your life and you're like, wow, I cannot believe I've lived, you know, 30, 40, 20 some years and I've never felt this. What is this? And it's soul alignment. It's you becoming closer and closer and closer to your soul. It's always been in you, but now you're awake to it. And now your soul is making you feel a certain way when you're watching something because it's in alignment. You're feeling a certain way when you're reading something or hearing something on the radio or talking to a healer, or talking to a YouTuber or talking to a stranger. It'll just hit your bones. And this is how you navigate life from now on. When you're feeling that sense of joy or peace or goosebumps, or maybe you start crying out of nowhere, your body and your soul is saying, this is truth. This feels right. And you'll know the difference between a cry that is grieving or pain or you're in suffering and a cry that is joyful and like relief. And it's like, I've been through so much and I'm ready for more. There's, there are two different types of cries, right? Both are necessary. The first cry, the grief, the pain, the trauma, the suffering, we have to cry to get it off of our nervous system. Okay, so this is a huge piece of the spiritual awakening journey. You're going to cry an awful lot. And the spiritual awakening process can take, you know, six or seven years. I'm six years in, I believe I'm moving into seven and I still have days where I'm crying and I don't know why I'm crying. And it's my body saying, okay, we're, it's safe to release this layer. I could be crying about something that happened to me when I was six years old. I could be crying about the loss of my daughter or the loss of my dad. We don't always have to identify what it is. But if it's surfacing, it's saying it's time and we don't shove it back down. Don't stop that cry from happening because the crying is allowing your body to be free and it's allowing you to release. And guess what happens when you're more free? You have more moments in your car or at home, watching a video, listening to a song, feeling that soul alignment and you're crying in bliss and you're looking at the trees and everything feels brighter you start to feel that energy, which is high vibrational. You feel that more because you've released the pain and trauma from your past. And if you're new on the spiritual awakening journey, say you just came across these videos a couple months ago or last year, you're going to continuously purge. When your body is ready, it will release. So if you are about to go to an event or like a baby shower or a party and you're just grieving and you're so just upset for no reason. Don't go to the party. Tell your family, listen, I'm sick. I'm sorry. I have to take care of myself. Even if you're not sick, it's your soul is kind of sick right now. You're healing something. It's coming up and you can't, you can't control the timing. When our body is ready to heal, it will heal. And I learned very early on that I have to honor myself. I have to honor my feelings. I have to say no to certain parties and events. If I'm not ready to go, I cannot go. Your soul will not let you go. And if you force it, you'll feel the repercussions of that. Two days later, you'll get sick and then you're out of work for a week. And then it's just so much longer than it needed to be. And if you just would have honored what your body was guiding you to do, you wouldn't have gotten sick. So this path is super tricky because you have to move from following the brain, which you followed your whole life, to following the heart and to following the body because the soul lives in the body and we have to get the mind out of the way. And when the body is feeling a tug to leave a job, to leave a relationship, we have to honor that. We have to journal about it, talk to a healer, talk to a counselor, talk to a coach or somebody that can kind of let us know like what stage are we in? Are we in the stage where we take action? Are we in the early stages of intuitively knowing this isn't right for me anymore and I'm gonna allow the universe to unfold the next steps for me? This is all this new way of living, right? When you follow your body, 
it's an art. You have to literally like feel into when is the right time. And I always tell people like, if you're not ready to leave a job and you're not taking action, it's not time yet. You can still know that you don't want to be there, but there might be another lesson you have to learn. There might be another person you have to meet. So if you're not taking action to do it yet, a lot of times your soul isn't moving you to do it. Um, you'll know when it's time. You'll have full body, visceral anxiety every single day. It'll heighten when it gets closer to the time. You might um, come across new opportunities. People might be saying, hey, you should work here. And it's like the universe is aligning your next steps for you. And sometimes some people are guided. They have a soul contract to take a leap of faith with nothing lined up. You know, there are some brave souls out there that do that, or they, you know, you hear about people that have $10 in their pocket and they move across country. So your path might be different than my path or the person next to you or another spiritual teacher on YouTube. So you just have to follow what your body is calling you to do. And a lot of my clients are not in their body. They don't know how they feel. They've been so used to listening to the mind and the ego that they feel a little crazy because they're sitting on the couch going, my mind is telling me to go to the store, but my body doesn't want to go. And it feels like this inner dialogue and you feel crazy. You're like, I have multiple voices in my head. What is going on? And this is the battle of the ego. And we have to learn to follow the body. If the body is saying, stay home and rest, you stay home and rest. You will wake up and you will go to the store when the time is right. Don't force yourself to do something that your body is screaming at you not to do. And there's another piece of this too, because we have to know when it is time to push through the fear of not wanting to do something because you know what you're going to be happy after you do it. So something as simple as working out or, you know, getting certain tasks done around the house, you know, if you're not physically exhausted and you're just kind of being a little lazy and you know, you are <laughs> just go do the task, test it out and then see how you feel after and be like, okay, I'm taking inventory. I didn't really want to do this thing, but then I went and did it. And now I feel 10 times better. So in the future, when I feel that way, that means I need to push through and take action anyway. And there's going to be other moments where you're going to be completely exhausted and you're going to force yourself to do something and it's going to make it worse and you're not going to feel better. And that's how you know, oh, when I feel that way, that's when I sit on the couch and I trust that whatever needs to get done will get done. And that's letting go of the ego that's chirping in your ear saying you're lazy, you should be doing more, you shouldn't be resting. We have to turn that voice off when we're in the state of complete exhaustion. Because if we're not well, we can't take care of ourselves. We can't take care of our kids. We can't take care of the work we need to do. So you have to really start checking in with the body, okay? Another piece of the spiritual awakening journey, which I often discover with my clients when I get on a call with them and maybe they're like five months into learning about spirituality and they're like, maybe they grew up with like a Christian background or Baptist and they have these like, um, societal pressures to be a certain way in their community or a belief system, you know, you have to work hard to receive money. That's going to be a process that you might have to navigate alone because everybody in your reality is seeing you maybe take off from work. And they're like, what are you doing? Whereas you're listening to this video where I'm saying do less and you'll receive more, take more naps and you'll receive more money. And the 3D reality, all those people in your community are telling you the opposite. So you have to be a really brave and courageous soul to go against the grain and to not listen to all of those people and to trust me and to trust all the other spiritual teachers that you're listening to on YouTube or books that you're reading or mentors or healers that you're working with in your community. We are here to tell you that you can trust yourself. Your body is saying to rest, rest. Don't listen to the other voices that are telling you that you're crazy and money is not going to come or the job's not going to come. You're going to learn that it's 2024 right now. And we are living in a time it's called the new earth where the less you do, the more your vibration rises, which gets you on the dance floor with the universe, which allows everything to attract to you. So those people that are working hard for money you're going to end up making triple of what they make and you're going to only work like three or four hours a day. <laughs> That's going to become your new reality. And we are now transitioning you out of those old, stuck, tight, restrictive belief systems. 
And it's hard to do that. And you have to surround yourself with people like me. You have to surround yourself in communities like this who believe in this because it is hard to navigate alone. That's why I created my community called Awaken Your Magic and it's $44 a month. And sometimes I run promotions where it's $33 per month, but you pay a certain amount a month and you get access to all people like me, to all people who are like you. And they're early on the spiritual awakening journey and you're sharing your signs and your synchronicities and you're typing in the group chat like, oh my gosh, is anybody else feeling this today? What are the planets doing? I have anxiety at three in the morning and we let you know that you're not alone. So I created that community to support myself and my mission, number one, because it's important to support ourselves, right? And to know that we're worthy of receiving abundance and also doing our mission and getting paid for it. So this was a huge piece of my mission because I didn't have this. I didn't have a group chat to go in and talk to people like me back in 2018. I wish I did. (laughs) I wish I had access to a spiritual teacher who I was learning from on YouTube. You know, they didn't have that back then. And maybe they did and I just didn't come across it. But I created that community now on my website So that you guys who are newly on the journey have a little home base to go to, to check in with people, to to make sure you're not crazy, (laughs) to say, is anybody else going through this trauma? Or I dealt with this and everything is resurfacing right now. And you'll see that a lot of us are on the same page. We're going through the same situations. So feel free to join that. I'll leave my um, QR code on the screen here, but you know, I wish I would have had that. And so many of my clients say, Michelle, I don't know what I would do without you. Thank you so much for your guidance. Thank you so much for reminding me that I'm not crazy. And I'm glad that we're on the same page. And to me, mission complete, done. I can wipe my hands clean and say, I did what I came here to do. Because when I was suffering, I wanted this. And now I'm here giving this back to all of you. And speaking of giving back, you know, I make a video, I try to make a video every day for you guys. That's how passionate I am, because I don't want anyone suffering on this journey. I want to give you as much knowledge as I can. And I do it for free. So if you guys feel called, if you want to donate, if you're watching one of my readings or one of my videos and you feel like you just got something of value and you're like, Michelle really just changed my life. You're when you donate to my channel or when you tip somebody or when you're giving back to the universe, you're literally putting energy out there and thanking it. You're saying, I am so grateful for this video. I'm so grateful for this teaching. And you send money out and guess what? You get double and triple back. It's just the way the universe works and you're not giving to get right. We're giving because something is adding value to our life. And that's how the universe works. When we're getting something that's valuable, we should pay for it. And it should be an energy exchange. And I'm not demanding that you guys donate to my channel. I'm just saying, I am sharing that with you because I know how important it is for my abundance flow, for me to always be giving and being grateful when the universe is bringing me something right when I need it, I actually, it's almost like I'm thanking the universe with that money. I'm saying, universe, I needed that person's video. Thank you. I'm going to tip that person because they were the messenger and they followed their inner guidance to create the video for me. And now I feel like it was for me. So I'm going to pay for that. And I'm going to send that person $50 or whatever it might cost for a session, you know, like sometimes it's important to give back. So if you guys ever want to donate to my channel, or if you want to donate to other people, the little thanks button underneath this video is a place where you can donate through YouTube. And obviously they take a portion of the pay too. So if you ever want to just pay me directly, I have my PayPal, my Venmo, my cash app, all of that is in the description below. But that's another thing you need to know about the spiritual awakening journey is when you are giving your time, your energy, your abundance out, you're going to get double, triple back. So if you're feeling stagnant in your life, it might be because you haven't given in a while. And as soon as you hit send on that payment or that tip, or you hand that person that $5 um, at a restaurant, you're telling the universe, I'm ready for more because you're giving of your heart and your energy. Okay. And for me, I always do free readings every once in a while. I'll be on a call with somebody and I'll just treat them to a free reading. And I'll say, you know what? I feel guided right now. I feel like your guides are telling me not to charge you. And that happens. And that's me being of service. And, you know, it's kind of like me donating back to you guys. 
Um, and it's such a beautiful exchange. So when you're early on the spiritual awakening journey, it's important to understand that the more you give, the more you're continuing that flow of energy and giving could be a compliment, could be money, it could be love, it could be your energy, it could be your time. Okay, so make sure that you're doing that on this journey as well. So, so far in this video, we've talked about joining communities that make you feel less alone, knowing that whatever you give, you're going to get back and you have to start that flow. We talked about moving through limiting beliefs. Like if you had this really strict upbringing about the universe or God or Christianity, it's going to be hard to navigate these changes to open up your mind to believing something new without it feeling like a cult or this new way of being and having to navigate the chirping in your community of what are you doing? Why are you taking off from your job? Why are you resting more? All of these little laws of the universe, it's hard to take action on it when everybody around you is telling you it's not real. And they're telling you you're crazy and you shouldn't be doing it. And that's why community is so important. And these videos are so important because we need to get as many people into this new lifestyle of following their body following the soul call, knowing how to nurture yourself through this process, knowing when to say no to an event, right? And the final thing I want to talk about in this video is nurturing your energy. So one thing that happens, actually two more things I'm going to talk about, your energy and connections to other people. So we'll first talk about energy. So as you're on this journey, like I talked about earlier, you might start crying out of nowhere, right? You might be around a high vibrational video or a high vibrational person, and all of a sudden it activates you to start releasing emotions. It's because their high vibration, they've done so much work on their body, on their vessel, their content is super, super light and positive and addicting. It's because they've done the work on themselves to heal. So the more addicted you feel to somebody's energy and you just feel so good after you leave them, you feel like you've taken a drug, that's because they have a very, very clean nervous system. They've done the work to release all of their traumas, not all, but majority of their traumas, and they're able to show up in kind of like a sage energy where their vibration affects you and allows you to heal. So that's essentially what healers are. So if you did not know this about the spiritual awakening journey, the more you're around a healer, I'm a healer, I'm a Reiki level two practitioner, I've done six years of nervous system work. So if you're around my energy or you're watching my videos, you might feel different after watching them. It's just the science of this journey. When you're around somebody who has done a ton of healing, they feel like pureness, they feel like light, and you end up picking up that energy and it feels like a drug. You're like, oh my gosh, I just feel like they just cleansed me. And now I feel like so light and I can just take on the world and I have all this creativity. A lot of times, this is the second piece of what I wanted to talk about with soul connections. A lot of times people take this the wrong way and they think that you're their person because they feel this juice energy after being around you but they're not realizing that it's just an energy exchange. It's not a sexual intimacy type of thing. But with energy, people that are unaware and newly on the journey, they can't discern between the two. They don't understand it. All they know is that they feel good. And they're like, wow, I've never met anybody that makes me feel this good. They must be my person. So you want to use your discernment when you're on this journey to make sure to protect yourself if you start to do this energy work and you start to become that sage-like energy, you might have a lot of people assuming that you're the one, right? Or they might message you and say, oh my gosh, we're so much alike, or we have this alike, or we have that alike. And I believe that we all have so many similarities. When somebody's claiming to be like you, you have to be mindful of where they are on their journey. You know, are they feeling a little lost in their life? Um, because their energy can sometimes latch onto your energy and they're thinking about you all the time. And you want to protect your energy and set boundaries because you might be somebody who's getting that from like seven or eight different people. You know, they all might be saying we have so much in common and they might be, you know, going to bed at night thinking about you and you're like, no, sorry. <laughs> so you have to protect your energy and just be mindful that it's natural for all of us to have similarities. And the more we awaken, the more alike we become. 
So you might even find it with your friends and family or strangers. You're like, oh my gosh, we even look the same or we sound the same or, you know, we're in alignment doing the same things in our lives. That's just the way the universe works. You're just aligned to these like-minded souls and you're here matching up with them for the time being for growth. It does not mean you're meant to be with them. It is, does not mean you're meant to marry them. You know, I've had many people email me and assume that I was their twin flame or their soulmate, or they book sessions with me trying to think that they're going to like start a relationship. And it's because they feel so good after watching a video. And this happens to a ton of other readers. They get a lot of people who are newly on the journey and they feel so good and they, they interpret it wrong and that's okay. And that's why we're here to share these videos to let you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You're just feeling the energy and you're taking action on it. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to take action on it. Just feel the energy and just sit with it. You know, your ego is going to want to cling to the person. It's going to want to take it further. And you have to realize that where you are on your journey is not where they are on their journey, right? So if you're five months into your spiritual awakening and somebody is four years into it, you are not at all thinking the same thoughts. You might be thinking you are, but you're not right? And you will know if it's a match, if they're reaching out to you, wanting to talk to you. If it's not reciprocal, then you have to let that go and just take the energy for what it is. So on the spiritual awakening journey, one of the biggest things I found is that so many people assume that when you have great energy, they think it's an intimate partnership that's supposed to be birthed through that process, or they think it's a best friendship. Um, but it really is just a matching or an energy pull, right? Like, so say you're just starting out on the journey and you're with somebody who's kind of like sage-like or they have great energy, you know, you might be feeding off of their energy and you have to be mindful of that too, to not be taking from them, right? Because they have their own stuff that they have to go through too. They still have traumas. They still have pain. And we can't always be taking and pulling from somebody like that. Our job is to work on us so we can reach that level. So we can match that high vibrational energy so that we can help other people heal too. So there's tons of boundaries that come into play when you start to spiritually awaken and you have to set your own and you have to be mindful and be gentle with people who might be clinging to you, who might be assuming certain things. If it's not reciprocal, then it's not happening. Okay. So pull back your energy. If you're, if you're feeling glued to somebody else and they're not reciprocating, it's probably just an energy that that's there. It doesn't mean that you're meant to be with them, best friends with them, date them, all of these different things. It's just like attracts like, and you might be crossing paths to grow. You might be meant to see something in this person that you see in yourself. So you fall more in love with it. And I love that for my clients. When my clients, I work with all women and they always are like, we have this in common and we have that in common. And I love it because we can all grow and learn together in the same state that we're in. And eventually they will evolve and we'll go different ways. And then we go meet other people who are like us at the certain time that we're at. So it's so beautiful. It's like a dance. You're dancing with different people on the stage at different times in your life. For a couple months, you might be dancing with one client and sharing energy and learning from each other. And then you might literally physically date somebody in your reality, in your community, and then realize, wow, we're not a match anymore. And then you move on and you change dance partners. So it's not, nothing is fixed. Your mind and your ego on a spiritual journey is going to cling. If you're single, or maybe even if you're married, um, some people are not happy in their relationships. So the mind will look to cling to somebody who's high vibrational and the ego is going to say, they're my person. And you got to pull back and say, nope, they're not my person. If they're not reaching out to me, <laughs> then it's not reciprocated. And it's just the energy of that person that is making me feel really good because they're a healer. And when you're on this journey, it's important to take care of your energy and to get outside in nature and to not get caught in that. I don't want to call it limerence, um, but don't get caught up in a story of what you think somebody is to you or, you know, how you think a certain situation is going to go at your job or a person that you're working with. Your ego is super tricky and it will tell you all these different stories. And it's until you see it in your reality, that's when you believe it. Okay. So if you're thinking somebody is a certain way, 
don't think that until you get proof that they are that way. You know, there were certain guys in my past who I created a story about who they were and how they were to me. And then I met them in person and they were nothing like what I thought. So our mind is so tricky. It creates the story and it puts us in that limerent state of thinking something is something and it's not. And we have to get really real with ourselves and not cling to a story and say, until I see it in my reality, then I'll believe it. And I know that's the opposite of manifesting because you have to believe it first and then you'll see it. But when we're talking about human connections, we don't want to assume somebody is a certain way until they are proving it to us and that they're trustworthy and honorable and they're actually responding to us. Um, that's when you're going to take it for what it is and move forward with it and pursue it. Okay. So don't consistently pursue somebody who's not pursuing you. Okay. Cause you're, you might be thinking thoughts that are just not, um, not what they're thinking and it's not a match. So just be mindful of that too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me just double check my list to make sure I got everything. Um, oh, the final thing is you are here for a bigger purpose. You know, you might have had moments in your past where you feel like God saved your life or the universe protected you from something, from some sort of harm. And you're like, all right, I'm meant to be here. I'm meant to share my experiences, but what is it? I don't know what my purpose is. And that's perfect. You don't need to know everything right now. That is your ego. And that is the mind trying to control your future. And you have to get really, really comfortable with being in the unknown. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what job is coming next. But in every moment when you're in the unknown, I want you to say, okay, whatever I don't know about my life right now and whatever I'm scared about, let's imagine that I get the answer next Friday. Next Friday, I'm going to have all the answers. What am I going to do until next Friday? I'm going to relax and I'm going to trust that my soul will move me or give me a signal in my body that makes me feel so good. And I'm going to be guided to take action on that thing to lead me to that desire. And that's how you navigate the unknown. Your ego will be driving your car, getting a shower, doing the dishes going, we need to find out. We need to find a new job. We need to get this money. And in that moment, you're going to pause and say, nice try ego. We don't drive the car. Our soul drives the car and that thing that we need is already on its way. And right now I'm just going to do the dishes and I'm actually going to turn some music on and I'm going to sing and I'm going to dance because I don't need to have the answer right now. My ego could never come up with a solution that my soul could. And you surrender and you get out of that mind and you stop trying to figure it out and you say, the answer's already determined. On Thursday, it arrives. What am I going to do until Thursday? I'm going to relax and I'm going to have fun and I'm going to put on some music and dance and sing along the way. So get out of that mind. Trust that your soul lives in your body and it will move you to what's best for you. But you have to be willing to say no to the things that your body is saying no to. Okay, so you got to align that mind with the body. When the body says no, the mind has to say no. Okay, when the body says yes, the mind's going to say no, and you're going to have to turn that off and say, I got to follow my body, even when this doesn't make any sense at all, like leaving a job, it doesn't make sense. Everybody's telling you not to do it. Follow your body. You can trust it. A lot of times when I have clients that quit their job on a Thursday, by Tuesday, they're in a brand new job that pays more, less hours, but they didn't know it was coming until they let go of the job. So have faith and trust that you are always taken care of on this journey. There is no wrong move, okay? Even if you take a leap and you're like, oh no, I don't know if this was the right move. There will be a magic carpet that will catch you and it will pivot you and it will move you to a better place. So you can trust that. If you need help on this journey, like I said, I have my community. I have a group coaching program called Transform Me. I have one-to-one -one mentorship, which I love to do. That's my most popular. Everyone signs up for that. Not everyone, but that's where I'm spending a lot of my time every single week is mentoring women. And then I do one-on-one -on -one readings. So if you just want one hour or an hour and a half of time with me to figure out your path, and maybe that's all you need for a couple months, but you're not alone. So utilize the resources that I put together for you. I did not do this for nothing. I did it for you to use. So please go to my website. Everything's in the description box below and follow the call of your heart, whatever you look at. And even if you look at it, you're like, oh no, that's a couple thousand dollars. I can't afford that. Yes, you can. You need to start saying I am abundant and I can afford this. And I tell my clients all the time, when you invest in yourself, you get double, triple back. 
every single one of my mentorship clients purchased the mentorship and within weeks they got almost the same amount of money back or double when i signed up for a course that i took two winters ago it was like two thousand dollars i got four thousand dollars the week later so you and i put the two thousand dollars on a credit card i did not have the money i put it on a credit card and i was like universe I am bold, I am brave, I am courageous. I know you love when I take care of myself and I invest in myself and this program was gonna grow me and make me stronger. I put the 2000 on a credit card. One week later, I got $4,000 from my mindfulness program. It was insane. I, I texted the guy that was running the program. I was like, yo, I was like, I just invested in your program and I just got paid double back by the universe. And we both said, this is what happens. When you invest in yourself, you get the money back. So you are not going to say that you can't afford the services that you need. Okay. I can afford it. The universe will provide it. Start to speak differently. Start to say, Hey, Michelle, like I would love to book your services, but the, the money is on the way. I'll be booking you soon. The money is on the way. Don't say, I wish I could book your services. I can't afford it. Start to become aware of that dialogue and start to switch. Okay. So I'm sending you so much love, like, comment, subscribe, help me get these messages out there. Like I said, if you feel called to donate, if I added value to your life today, I, I would be so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and supporting me and my channel, and I will see you all in the next one. All right, peace out.